All right, folks, welcome back to another video with flyfishingwithjeff.com, and today we're going to match the hatch. Um, you hear that term a lot, and often it's used for dry fly guys, very intricate hatches of, uh, in fact, very small bugs. But today we're going to talk about a couple of streamer match the hatches. And the first one we're going to do today, um, this is a kind of a new fly that I've just started to use last year and really honed in on it a little bit more this year. Um, and I'll let you look at that right there. That's the fly we're going to do. That's a jig fly, as you can see. And I've borrowed a little of the technology from the regular spin casting guys up north. These are neon moon eye jigs made by VMC. Okay, um, and you can find those in a various, various different places. This is one sixteenth, and it's two grams, <clears throat> and it's two pieces. Okay, and um, we're going to use that jig fly right there, as you can see, one sixteenth. In fact, I found that I can cast one eighth of an ounce if you want to go to larger, and I have made these in a larger fly. Uh, I can cast one eighth of an ounce pretty efficiently. <clears throat> um, past that, it becomes kind of the chuck, chuck and duck material. So we're going to go ahead and put this on our vise, and I'm going to show you this, <clears throat> and then I'm going to show you a little clip immediately following. And you'll see, uh, I was out a couple of weeks ago here locally, <clears throat> and uh, snagged a bait fish. And again, sometimes nature shows you exactly what you should be using but you'll see on this video how closely this fly resembles um, these small minnow bait fish that are out there that are being feed, fed on here locally by bass crappie those kinds of things you can tell this fly is for <clears throat> the jig people to push a, a rubber body up over so i'm going to simply turn and take my end nips um, and cut that off. It's got a little blunt part to it, but it's not going to be too much of a problem. And I'm going to start with white bucktail. Okay? And we've talked about bucktail a couple different times, <clears throat> but bucktail, you'll find that the less you're using, the better things really turn out to be. It gives a little bit more movement. You put too much bucktail and it won't move and flow as well. So I usually talk in terms of a pencil a half a pencil. This is about a fourth of a pencil. Okay, so we got about a fourth of a, a pencil of bucktail. We're going to leave that right there. We're going to come back to our. I'm using big fly, white, uh, 400 denier big fly thread, and we're going to come right behind the back of that little uh, hook part there that I just cut off and put a thread base on. Come back up and stop it right there. Remove our tag. <clears throat> We're going to go back to our bucktail here. Whisk it out. Get rid of some of the bad stuff. And we're going to come in right behind this little part that's meant to hold the, the rubber body on a jig hook. And we're going to simply wrap backwards. And I'm pinching that bucktail hair now as I do that and I'm becoming more and more tight as I do that so that it doesn't turn out and splay. I'm holding on to that. I'm going to come back up, come in front, come behind and stop. Now that's the first part. It's that simple. Already probably would catch a fish. I've learned and I really like to come back with red or in this case I'm going to put just a hint and when I say a hint I'm talking about maybe 20, 30 fibers of pink bucktail. <clears throat> so I'm going to come back in, put a layer of pink bucktail right on top of that white bucktail that we just put. And again, I'm going to pinch the bucktail because I want it to stay kind of on the top, which is going to be the bottom of the fly. And there I have it. And I'm going to come back up now and go once in front and again behind. Okay, now I have a hint of pink and that's going to actually be on the bottom of the fly. 
Um, next, I'm going to grab, uh, I've got a loose pile here because I'm kind of at the end of my fibers, but I'm going to grab a few fibers um, of flash and come in and tie that. Let's move our thread back just a bit. Tie right in the middle once, twice, pull that back, come over the top, and secure that that fiber right there. Now, at this point in time, I can kind of pull it around and print it, but I don't want it to be all one length. Um, I want it to be various lengths, okay? And right there it is. Now, we've only got one last thing, and I'm going to give you a couple options. Um, we're going to use <clears throat> a Palmer chenille. I like this medium gray Palmer chenille put out by Wapsie. It's CPL2125. I use it for all kinds of flies. Again, Palmer chenille medium pearl gray by Wapsie. It's CPL2125. That's an option. But today, I'm going to try this. I like this UV polar chenille. Okay, this is UV pearl. And you can find that in various different places as well. It's a more wispy uh, polar um, chenille. And so we're going to, I just happened to pull a piece out from another fly. We're going to tie in right here at the back. Okay, once, twice. Now we're going to move our thread all the way up to the behind this moon eye jig head. Put a little thread base right there and leave it. Now we're going to palmer this forward, and this stuff doesn't work quite as well in keeping the fibers all laid back. So what I like to do is wet my fingers and pull this fiber back. And I'm going to lay it almost thread to thread as I do this. And I'm going to pull down a little bit to tighten it. Again, pulling those fibers back. I don't want them trapped underneath there. And I'm going to work my way forward. Okay. Continue to pull those fibers, okay? Get them all oriented and pull those back. Every time you do it, we're going to orient those to the back. Okay, takes a little bit more work with this UV polar chenille. These are waspy type fibers, very light. They move around. They obviously refract light, refract, refract light and do a good job that way. Okay, so I've got this moved to the front now, and I'm going to come over the top and trap that with a couple of loops. Come in with my scissors very carefully not to cut off my thread, which I do occasionally. If you're like me, you probably do as well. And now we're going to pull all those back, and we're going to wrap and we're going to pull down with this big fly thread now and make a little head right behind the fly. There it is. <clears throat> Simple whip wrap here, whip finish. A um, couple, three, four times. That'll take care of it. Pop it off. Drop it down in there. Come back in. And if you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I really have fell in love with, and now I've been finishing most of my flies with Bondique. If you haven't used Bondique, there's the product. Go find it. Uh, it's a UV product. <clears throat> it comes in these neat, real handy little tools. It even has a torch on the other end. And I'm simply going to put a drop or two on top to lock those threads in. Okay, looks, looks nice. I'm going to grab my bigger torch, give it a little UV. If you do this out in the sun, you'll have to be careful because as soon as you the sun hits it, it's going to set up. And there is our match the hatch fly very quickly. does not take very long. And I think you're going to find that this is a fly that will really work. Smallmouth bass, crappie. <clears throat> A largemouth bass. I'm sure if it were tied just a little bit smaller or maybe even on this size, the bluegill would like it. So there are a lot of different applications for this fly. So now what I want you to do is just take a second and watch this match the hatch 
video that I have for you. Um, again, this is me out on a lake here locally a couple weeks ago. And then come back with me and here in just a second I'm going to show you how to tie our cicada fly because this is the year of the cicada. Well, I think we call that matching the hatch. See this little jig I have here and this little bait fish pattern, bait fish fish that I just snagged. It's pretty cool stuff. About the same length. Whoop. folks welcome back so you saw what I'm talking about there with the with the flies those jig flies looked exactly like that bait fish that was in the water and like I said I just happened to snag one pulled it in and you could see how my fly my jig head fly that I just showed you looked a lot like almost exactly like the the bait fish pattern that was in the water um, I know that I was up in Canada a few years back and I was fishing one of the smallmouth lakes, <clears throat> wasn't doing particularly well, and I hooked a small, smaller smallmouth, and it burped up a fish, and I looked at my fly patch, and I happened to have a couple just almost exactly like it. I switched to that, and from there on out, the afternoon was, was pretty incredible. So matching the hatch. Now, on this segment, I'm going to show you how to tie a cicada fly just one of my own versions. Uh, there's a million versions out there. And uh, this is the year of the cicada. If you're here in the Midwest or really a whole bunch of different parts of the country, this is the Brood X 17 year big hatch. Now, if you want to see me fishing a, a cicada hatch, you can go to my fly, uh, website, flyfishingwithjeff.com, and search cicada. And you'll see me from a couple of little lakes here locally. Uh, we have a you know a occasional hatch, a smaller hatch. And a few years ago, I started catching carp on cicada flies. Um, it was just nothing short of an awesome day and and a sore arm. And go watch the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. It didn't matter really what you dropped into the water. I think you could have dropped a, a piece of charcoal into the water, and the fish would have eaten it at that point in time. I caught bowfin and largemouth bass and just um, carp one after the other. So we're going to tie a cicada fly for you here. It's pretty simple and I try to keep it that way. These are a size 6, six Tiemco TMC8089. Size 6 Tiemco and um, I like these hooks because they have a wide gap there. You want, especially the carp who have a small kind of odd shaped mouth to be able to come up and, and obviously hook themselves. So we started with some black big fly um, fly uh, thread on here and um, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to start with a piece of red, uh, excuse me, orange and black chenille, not very long, and we're going to clip that off, set that aside, and we're going to tie that in right here going backwards and we're going to leave it for just a second kind of hanging out back there now we're going to come in with just a piece of cheap simple black chenille okay and we're going to tie it in right at the back of our fly simple stuff okay so there we are we've got those tied down okay and we're going to move our thread up to about halfway up on the hook shank okay and we're going to start with our black and we're going to do oh maybe three four there was four wraps tie off that <clears throat> black chenille right there and give it a clip okay set that aside for another fly now we're going to come back with our orange and we're going to come over the top with it, okay, and we're going to go a little more loosely so that some of the black, so we're just going to do three wraps here, well, let's give it one more up front and tie that 
off. That's our base that we're going to work off of now for this fly. Okay, clip it off, set this aside. This will do another fly. Go ahead and uh, do a couple more wraps to secure those down right there. Okay. Now we're going to grab a little piece of flash. Um, black flash works well. I've got just simple bait fish flash here that I use so much of. And again, I'm just going to tie it in in the middle right here once over the top. Snag those, pull those backwards, lay those backwards, and capture those one more time. Just that simple. Okay, leave those alone for now. And we're going to pick up just a small piece of poly yarn. You can find that almost anywhere. Um, you could even take a little piece of a rope, pull it apart. That will work just as well. And we're going to tie the poly yarn in once. We're going to flip it backwards, come back over the top, and capture that poly yarn with a few turns right there. So now we're going to clean those up. We're going to pull those back and we'll cut off our flash just a little bit shorter than our yarn. Right there you go. And we're going to leave it like that. Now if you need to make some movement, you can do so right now, but it's not too bad. We'll go with that. And now <clears throat> we're going to form the body. And all this is is just simple one millimeter thick black um, mat here. Um, very simple stuff and you can find this at craft stores. You don't have to pay big dollars for it and you don't even have to buy these already cut because this little piece that I got here is about a half inch by an inch and a quarter. Half inch by an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to take my rounded scissors, going to come down at the bottom. Okay, let me set this out of the way for a second. And all I'm going to do is make a little rounded cut right into about halfway up and I'm going to clip off that part, pull it loose. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to make another little rounded cut about to the same distance. Throw that aside. And there is my body that I'm going to use. It doesn't have to be perfect. Believe me, I'm telling you. Like I said, I think you could probably chuck a piece of charcoal in at the right time and they're going to hit it. We're going to move our vise back in here for you. Now, um, we're going to do a, a, before we get any further, I'm going to take my piece of, of uh, black chenille, tie it back in, and I'm going to make a little bit of a body now. I'll move my thread forward, okay, to about there, and I'm going to make a little bit of a hump, a little bit of a body. I'm pulling kind of tight on that chenille, give it a little bit of volume, okay? There it is. We're going to go over once, twice. Three times, lady. And we're going to cut it off. Come back in with our thread. Secure that thread real quick. Move it back up. Secure all that. And again, this is all going to be under so it doesn't have to be pretty. Now we're going to take some super glue. I like working with the gel, Gorilla Super Glue Gel. And we're going to just put a little douse right on top. That gel stuff just likes to hang out right there, which is nice. That's how we want it. It'll soak into that chenille. We're going to go back to our body real quick. And we're going to move our thread back now through that. Soak up some of that. There we go. Perfect. Set our, our body right down on top of that. We're going to come over once. Pull tight. You can shape it kind of with your fingers. Pull tight again. Okay. And we're going to move forward with the fly. And I'm going to leave myself about an eighth of an inch gap between it and the eye of the hook. Fold the body part over. And we're going to make a little segment out of that. And we're going to leave this alone for right now. Okay. So you can see it's segmented into three pieces. But now we're going to take our thread. And this is why you like the big fly thread. And we're going to simply pull that down. And this does not have to be pretty. So don't, don't um, judge or evaluate your own. Just simply put it on there. And that's what we want it to look like. 
at this point in time. Now we need to put a couple of pairs of legs. I like orange and black. I've got some orange and black here. I'm going to grab two strands of orange and black silly legs or uh, rubber legs. Easy way to do this, move your thread to the middle, okay? And we're going to simply tie those in on this side. One loop over, another loop over. Now I'm going to simply slide my legs over to the top and leave those alone for right now, okay? So we've got some legs, we'll trim those up later. I also have another set here that has red and black and uh, yellow. These are centipede legs. I'm going to cut a section of those and add those in there as well. A little more movement on our fly. We're going to come right over the top, staying between the strands. Again, grab the two and pull them right over to the other side. And now we can work on trimming those if we need to want to, which we do. We'll take a look at it right here and we'll get everything kind of in the right order. And we're going to trim a couple of these legs just a little bit. When this fly hits the water, we want some movement just like a cicada, if you've ever watched them when they fall off and hit the water, there's movement going on there. They know they're in a bad spot and they don't want to be there in that bad spot. Okay, so there we've got our legs. All right, we're almost done. We're gonna fold our fly back over now, okay? And we're going to come back with our thread and go right in between at the back of that, creating a little bump. Oh, let's try that again. I think I may have made the front part just a little bit too short, but we're going to make it work for right now. I'm trying not to capture my legs on the other side. And right there we have it. So we're almost done. Last thing that I like to do is I'm going to take some, not bucktail, but deer hair, belly, deer belly hair. And in this case, I like orange. Um, and to be quite honest, I want to be able to see this fly from a uh, long ways away. And I'm going to take probably about, oh, a good half a pencil of orange. And I'm going to come right in on top. And when I pull down, it will splay those fibers for me. And that gives it a really good look. You can move those around. around. You don't even at this point in time. So last thing we need to do is to take our whip finish tool, okay? And we have to work this fiber around here right between the triangle and not grab our legs. Okay, let's go once, let's go twice. There we go. And pull tight, okay. So we're almost done here, and um, we're going to finish this up with Bondique. I'm going to turn my fly over, okay. Ooh, it looks pretty good. I like it. And we're going to put a good layer of Bondique over these threads on the bottom. And remember, this is a UV product, so it's not going to set until it hits the sun or we hit it with the torch. Okay, so that doesn't take very long. And one of the things I, I don't want to do is spend hours on cicada flies when I may very well lose a few here and there for various reasons. And so that's a fast, quick fly that I think you'll like. Okay, let me take this one off real quick and give you a look at it up close and personal. You can see that fly from a long ways away. When it hits the water, it's going to have a lot of movement. And again, if you haven't yet used a cicada fly, watch what's going on in nature. Um, I remember, and you'll see this if you go watch the video that I previously told you about, but there were these vines hanging down and these cicada were so thick that they would 
knock each other off and when they hit the water it looked like jaws you could see the fish coming for for several feet and I'm talking about every kind of fish if you watch this video you'll see that I catch a giant bowfin about a 27 inch bowfin and he just comes up and gobbles up this so that's that's nutrients to them they don't care what it looks like and um, that little fly doesn't take very long pretty sturdy you'll go through a, a whole bunch of uh, fish before this one really wears out tears up and um, I think it's easy to tie and I think you can get the, the the gist of it so there you go there's our match the hatch for today um, and uh, if you like what you're watching please hit the like button subscribe to the channel you can send me any questions to my website at flyfishingwithjeff.com